fear. First, to understand how to handle bullying, we under need to understand what bullying is. According to StopBullying.gov, bullying is defined as unwanted, aggressive behavior among school-aged children that involves a real or perceived, perceived power of imbalance. The behavior is repeated or has a potential to be repeated over time. Both kids who are bullied and who bully others may have serious lasting problems. It is important to recognize that both sides, whether the victim or the bully, are both suffering. Bullies might not even realize that they are being bullies at all. Simply put, bullying is defined as repeated, systematic attacks intended to harm those who are unable or unlikely to defend themselves. Why should we stop bullying? What's the big deal? Bullying can have lasting side effects. Bullying causes fear, inadequacy, feelings of failure, lack of motivation, depression, mental ins instability, suicidal thoughts, and sometimes even actions. Our proposed solution is to change the school's environment. In a book called A Developing Person, there's only one solution given, and it is very simple. The entire school, community, itself needs to change as a whole. Teachers and bystanders, parents and aides, bullies and victims. In fact, the entire school can either increase the rate of bullying or decrease it. Every school is different, just as every bully and victim is different. Having one rule to wash over the entire situation is unethical and harmful, which is why zero tolerance policies and other policies like zero tolerance just don't work. Web sites like StopBullying.gov or Tolerance.org slash Bullying Basics were created to help schools, teachers, and parents plan for bullying and create a case-by-case -case stance for it. Our plan of action is first to recognize that a zero-tolerance policy doesn't work. Working with every child in every scenario as if it's different, because every child is different. And you never want to call a child a bully. Like we said earlier, Sometimes children don't even realize they are being bullied. Inform students about bullying and allow them to know that they can come to you or any other adult if they have a problem with bullying. Involve them in self-esteem and self-building activities. When somebody is, feels their own self-confidence and their own worth, the victim is no longer a victim and the bully no longer wants to bully. Working with parents to combat bullying at home is a big major step in, in this plan. Educating teachers, students, and parents to be loving and accepting of both the victim and the bully can be monumental in changing the way that you look at the situation of bullying. Create an atmosphere of acceptance and love. Make a school a place where a student can be encouraged to learn. Encourage students to follow Rachel's Challenge or visit websites like StopBullying.gov and Tolerance.org slash BullyingBasics. Teach them to do random acts of kindness for others. The whole school approach is the best solution because some efforts succeed and some do not. Because it doesn't just focus on stopping one student's behavior with interventions and punishment, it requires all students and teachers, parents and staff, to just support each other and establish an anti-bullying culture at the school. We need to take action to prevent bullying by changing our mindset and our actions. We can change lives if we choose to do so. Thank you.
sphere. First, to understand how to handle bullying.